Otexu raised his hand in frustration and helplessness. Suddenly, Li Jian turned back to look at Sophie, his face breaking into a wicked smile. Sophie felt a mixture of confusion and unease as she listened to him say there was a way to escape. Outside the Earth's atmosphere, the missile had been launched and was heading towards Seoul. The city's emergency broadcast urgently advised all citizens to seek shelter immediately as the Mouse Lang missile was descending upon them, signaling an imminent catastrophe. People panicked, running in fear and chaos. What kind of madness is this? The disaster prevention weapon is falling on the center of Seoul. Cries and screams filled the air as people scattered in panic. Sun Jae and Yuha found themselves amidst the fleeing crowd, unaware and uninformed of what was happening. A loud explosion echoed as waves and missiles collided in the sky, raining down debris. Sun Jae recognized that among the chaos, Legion was the one flying Sophie on his shoulders towards the missile. Despite her terrified screams, Legion used his authority as the head of the Aquarius constellation to launch his wanderer and instant teleportation skills, instantly teleporting them to the missile. Ignoring Sophie's pleas, Legion firmly held her hands, rotating them in circles. If you can't do it, then you, me, and all the innocent people under there will die. Do you understand? Now it's time for you to pay for your cowardly life for the past twenty years. Ignoring her protests, he threw the straight into the missile. Sophie screamed in terror, begging Legion not to throw her. But her cries were futile as she was tossed mercilessly into the air. All Sophie could muster was a curse at Legion, calling him a mad dog in the sky. Meanwhile, the guardian deity of Aquarius suddenly found himself summoned to face the missile along with the Holy Mother. Before acting, the guardian deity of Aquarius, using all his words to curse Legion as a lunatic, realized there was no time left. Desperate, Sophie wanted to curse as well, but she was too frightened, urging the guardian deity to find a solution quickly. Not wanting his Aquarius constellation to perish, the guardian deity relinquished all his powers to Sophie, urging her to find a way to stop the missile. Sophie, overwhelmed with fear, screamed out loud, her tears of terror unexpectedly triggering the tear skill of the goddess. A powerful wave of magic emanated from her tears, directed towards the missile. Despite the fierce opposition, the tear skill of the goddess quickly defeated the missile tearing it into pieces. Sophie's mind spun as she muttered to herself, We did it. I did it. But suddenly, she snapped back to reality, realizing she was falling freely in the air. Legion, without bothering to catch her, just stood by, chuckling slyly. You've been enhanced. Even if you fall, it won't matter. Look above. The explosion caused by the collision of waves and missiles is raining debris. You better find a way to deal with it, because those falling debris are enough to crush entire areas. The people below can see the explosion, and they're in a frenzy. Suddenly remembering that the missile was Somtu's doing, he decided to send a grandiose greeting to her. Hugo, who was at home, suddenly heard Legion's voice, and asked if he heard him speaking. Surprised, he realized it was Legion's voice, and asked if he had resolved the missile's situation. It's very urgent. I don't have time to explain it to you. Let me borrow the absolute coordinate skill quickly. The absolute coordinate skill of the Sagittarius constellation is used to move accurately to a designated target. The combined power will be enhanced when combined with various weapons. Otexu, hearing this, thought the situation was indeed very dangerous, so he hurriedly sent Legion the absolute coordinate skill without hesitation. Legion chuckled mischievously, thanking him for being a loyal servant. Thanks a lot, number one slave, he said, quickly receiving the absolute coordinate skill of the Sagittarius constellation, with 238 uses. Smirking, Legion, combined with the absolute coordinate skill of the Sagittarius constellation and instant teleportation skill, 
teleported all the debris from the missile as a gift to Song Tu Chi's location. The overlapping circles of magic had made all the debris disappear, much to the joy of the people below. Sun Jie and Yu Ha were also happy for their uncle Li Jun's successful intervention. Sun Yuk stood amidst the cheerful crowd, but sensed something was amiss. How could the fragments disappear so easily? Suddenly, the sound from the Yin Yang Bell, also the holy place of the Song Tu Chai constellation, rang out. Sun Yuk heard someone from the other side shout, That idiotic fool! What is he doing with the authority of the head saint? He leaned against the glass, peering outside to see the Lang Mouse missile fragments falling towards the Yin Yang Bell, roaring like in a sci-fi movie. After the press conference in South Korea became trending everywhere, discussions erupted about Lee Chun's return after 20 years. In the Blue House, the presidential secretary's office, high-ranking officials of South Korea fervently discussed the rumor of Lee Chun's return and how he defeated the cancer saint, as well as thwarted the Lang Mouse missile's success. Suddenly, a green light appeared, piercing through the office ceiling causing everyone to cry out in fear. Legion descended onto the study table, holding Sun Yuk by the collar, his face still dazed. In his other hand, he held Otaksu, still wearing his yellow apron with the cute bear sniffling. The onlookers murmured anxiously, sensing the tension in the air. Since I'm here, I might as well settle the score with you lot, Legion announced. I came here to reclaim my money. You've been holding on to the funds from my sole belongings, haven't you? He glared at the officials in the corner who couldn't contain their gossiping mouths. Why did you give Oteksu the title of representative but still couldn't access his account? He interrogated, staring down the intimidated crowd. If no one explained to him properly, he threatened someone would face the consequences. One of the parliament members stood up to explain that since Lee Young's death, North Korea lacked a cancer saint, hence they couldn't trust saints from other countries. Moreover, the influence of Sagittarius was declining, so they had to rely on a more trustworthy figure than Hugo. But before he could finish, Li Jun punched him, demanding to know why they were behaving so illogically. Why choose a cheap witch like Hugo over Otaksu? He questioned, his anger escalating. What makes you think you can disrespect Otexu like this? He may not be outstanding, but he doesn't deserve such treatment. As Legion's fury grew, Otexu stood frozen, overwhelmed by the situation. Even though Legion insulted him, all Otexu could do was apologize and accept the blame. Eventually, Legion's demeanor softened, encouraging Otexu to stay strong and not let the situation break him. However, the tension remained palpable as Legion's anger simmered just below the surface, and just as the crowd was about to respond, a piercing scream echoed through the air. Everyone looked up anxiously as Heiji, the Sagittarius saint, arrived and berated them for mishandling the funds meant for repairing the Yin Yang Bell, accusing Sun Yuk of causing the destruction of the bell by sending Lang Mouse missile fragments there. Heiji's fiery gaze made Legion tense with hatred. Heiji exuded a menacing aura as she pointed directly at Legion's face to demand answers, causing him to look puzzled. He tilted his head and asked, Who are you again? His infuriating indifference made Heiji clench her lips in anger, deciding to raise her hand high and call forth her magic to obliterate the raggedy guy right in front of the office workers who were simply bystanders to the unfolding drama. The timid spectators watched in horror as Heiji summoned the soul of the queen demon Larry Queen, a red-haired demon with long horns who appeared behind Heiji with a shimmering effect, their giant wings spreading open like a giant fly from hue. Heiji, resembling a potato, was equivalent to a guardian deity and confidently instructed the ragged guy to be taken away. Before anyone could react, Legion swiftly grabbed the demon queen by the hair, lifting her up and attempting to subdue her. But the demon queen struggled and wailed, 
her cries echoing as Legion tried to assert dominance over her. However, in a sudden twist of events, something crashed down, and all that was visible afterward was a pillar of light on the ground. Legion landed back in the room unconscious, and the staff were left bewildered by the sudden turn of events. The Demon Queen's presence had vanished, causing chaos among the bystanders. Sun Yuk, intrigued by the summoning spectacle, ran beneath the hole, shouting in disbelief about the Queen's disappearance from her guardian. The separation of power made the Demon Queen seem more cunning, quietly retreating to her lair before it was too late. But Legion was quick to seize her, intending to capture her easily by grabbing her hair and pulling her up, thinking that was enough to subdue her. However, the struggling Demon Queen screamed and resisted, thwarting Legion's efforts. In the midst of the chaos, Legion's rage grew, prompting him to summon his own powerful magic. The scene was chaotic, with Legion threatening to erase the Demon Queen and the staff watching in awe. Only Sun Yux seemed fascinated by the summoning of the supreme technique of the Song Tu constellation. However, Legion's power seemed to falter as he struggled to control the situation. His borrowed powers from the Pisces constellation and the Quinn chatted magic disappearing. It was clear that Legion had underestimated the Demon Queen, thinking he could easily capture her by grabbing her hair. The staff watched in shock as Legion and Hugo left the room with a pile of documents, leaving behind cash but taking nothing else. Sun Yuk wondered why Hiji, the witch, didn't appear, considering she was expected to go berserk in the middle of the street if provoked. Legion seemed amused, having anticipated the outcome, and laughed triumphantly at the collapse of the yin-yang bell. He knew where the Demon Queen was and planned to meet her soon. The next day, at Sanjay's house, Legion took out a hamburger from his bag and handed it to Sanjay, who hesitated before returning it to Legion. Legion didn't bother searching his bag for anything else and asked Yuha and Jamin what they wanted to eat. Yuha was still indecisive, but as soon as Legion mentioned something natural, Yuha promptly tossed the burger outside knowing he had already fallen for Legion's taunts. Legion didn't stop there, threatening to imprison the Demon Queen in the sacred book if she didn't obey. Larry Queen quickly complied, obediently nodding her head, as Legion warned her not to misbehave. Legion raised his hand and tapped the floor, asking if the Demon Queen was confined in that place. Sun Jay's family were surprised to see the Demon Queen nod, sealing her fate with this opportunity. But when asked where she was, the Demon Queen hesitated, unable to reveal her whereabouts. Legion immediately spoke up. Now, do you want to speak for yourself, or should I do it for you? The fairy trembled uncontrollably, her face drained of color. She pointed towards one corner of the room, where stood a sacred statue, a gift within Sanjay's house. She could only hope for death, whether at the hands of Legion or Heiji. It made no difference to her. Jermin remembered that the statue had been broken once before. Legion, with great confidence, took hold of the statue, laughing to himself. Last time, I caught a whiff of something suspicious. Let's investigate. He activated his thirteenth sensory skill and intervened in the spiritual space within the statue. The statue cried out, accusing Larry Queen of treachery. Yuha was surprised, but the most shocking revelation came from the little old man. Indeed, it was the voice of the saint Heiji of Somtu trapped within. Inside the statue, Heiji's disappointed voice echoed as she questioned why things had turned out this way, why she had been exposed before this vile individual. It was all because of the collapsed demon tower which unleashed Legion's rage everywhere, even into the yin and yang realms. Everyone could feel the familiar wrath emanating from the tower, a clear sign that Legion was still alive. Heiji immediately departed upon learning of Legion's return, heading towards the home of Sun Jay's son. Initially, Heiji thought it was a good idea, given her previous connection there, 
but she wanted to confirm it once more. So, she promptly used instantaneous transference to inhabit the angelic statue. Entering into it, she found joy in seeing the foolish legion. However, the joy turned to despair as he threw the goddess statue to the ground, shattering it. This was the moment both Jermyn and Heiji cried, realizing that the vessel had been destroyed during the possession, trapping Heiji's soul within. When Jermyn arrived to repair the statue, hoping to restore it with a simple and inexpensive spell due to their reverence for the Saint Somtu, their hopes were dashed when they found a pig-shaped glue bottle in Jamin's hand. Each drop of glue that fell shattered the small hopes of Heiji, dissipating into nothingness. Heiji wept bitterly, while Jamin remained oblivious to the fact that their attempt to heal had only worsened the situation. And so, Heiji remained trapped within the statue until this day, witnessing Legion's smugness and contemplating how rumors of bullying circulated, fueling her resentment even further. Heiji cried out, calling upon Larry Queen to quickly release her from the exhibition box, but the cowardly Queen remained powerless, stating she neither wanted to nor could escape because she would only be captured again by Legion. So she begged her master not to command her to do futile tasks, astonished by the unexpected turn of events. His stark contrast with Legion, who had no empathy, infuriated Heiji to the point where her soul boiled with rage. She wished she could fly out and tear apart the betrayer's clothes. However, the gaze fell upon Sanjay, and she commanded him as the saint of Somtu to immediately attack Legion. Why should I do that? Sun Jay retorted, puzzled by Heiji's demeanor. But the answer was simple. She had not seen Legion's reduced treasure museum, and thus could not understand why he was so opposed to fighting his great idol. Sun Jay sighed in resignation, scratching his head in confusion. Heiji was about to launch into a moral discussion when Sun Jay interrupted with a decisive statement. So, if I leave Somtu, will that be enough? Heiji paused for about five seconds, suspended in the air, before asking incredulously, What do you mean, boy? I am a saint of Somtu, but Legion is a hero in my eyes. If being a follower of Somtu is the reason why we became enemies, then I will leave the group now. Sun Jay decisively took out the holy emblem from his pocket, returning it to Heiji much to her astonishment. As the emblem fell to the ground, the entire building shook violently, as if experiencing an earthquake. Heiji screamed, interpreting it as the punishment of the Songtu guardian deity. Since the disciples were facing the direction of the spouting constellation, the traitor would bear the deity's wrath and receive punishment immediately. In an instant, Sanja was overwhelmed by the divine power of the guardian deity, blood streaming from his eyes, nose, and mouth as he collapsed onto the floor, unconscious. Needless to say, Yuha and Jamin were panicked to the extreme, watching their younger brother lose consciousness and fall, hitting his head on the floor. Yuha panicked, while Heiji roared in frustration, quickly appealing to the guardian deity, You've made a mistake. He is a candidate for your successor, so he should be forgiven. Just order him to attack Legion, and it will be done. Sun Jay staggered, trembling on the floor, his scolding words directed at Legion, echoing loudly in the room. Shut your mouth. Sun Jay roared, recalling the time when Sun Yuk had asked him to abandon Jamin and others to flee, and when Che Yang Wei failed to resolve the situation with the spider demon threatening to collapse the entire supermarket. No one had any conscience, always abandoning others when things turned unfavorable. Only Legion truly cared for others, always ready to risk his life to save them, or even his own life. Therefore, in Sanjay's eyes, the true hero was Legion, and now he shouldn't use his gaze to judge others. You dead dogs, Sun Jeb growled ferociously, his body emitting a green aura, his eyes, nose, and mouth bleeding profusely. His words resonated and summoned the Songtu player deity into the ethereal purple space. 
she would punish Tan Jay, the saint, with the highest level of punishment, while also bidding farewell to Li Jun, the cause of this rebellion. But it seemed she had forgotten that someone was present here. Li Jun muttered as he severed the hidden connections, using the deep cutting method from the void. The sharp cuts appeared on the Song Tu deity's body as Li Jun swung his hand several times, leaving a sense of dread in the eyes of the Song Tu guardian deity. At the same time, in the Yin and Yang realm, the Song Tu disciples were struggling to control the destruction caused by the fragments. Mouse-like rockets fell, causing chaos, and the Song Tu disciples called for more water mages to restrain it. But it was strange. Suddenly, the power in their hands disappeared, and all the Song Tu disciples could no longer use any magical power, or more accurately, they could no longer sense any power at all. Sun Ji signaled to contact other disciples before losing control, but received similar answers. No divine communication or instantaneous transference could be used. Even De Raymond's miraculous door, of which Song Tu was always proud, had completely disappeared. The disciples were now forced to fight with bare hands, as even their mirrors lost connection entirely. It was as if the magic of Song Tu had completely vanished into thin air. This was because Li Jun had struck a blow, causing the power of the guardian deity to disappear before everyone's eyes. He almost laughed but refrained, leaving a sense of horror in the Song Tu guardian deity's eyes. At the same time, in the Yin and Yang realm, the Song Tu disciples were struggling to control the destruction caused by the fragments. Mouse-like rockets fell, causing chaos, and the Song Tu disciples called for more water mages to restrain it. But it was strange. Suddenly, the power in their hands disappeared, and all the Song Tu disciples could no longer use any magical power, or more accurately, they could no longer sense any power at all. Sun Ji signaled to contact other disciples before losing control, but received similar answers. No divine communication or instantaneous transference could be used. Even De Raymond's miraculous door, of which Song Tu was always proud, had completely disappeared. The disciples were now forced to fight with bare hands, as even their mirrors lost connection entirely. It was as if the magic of Song Tu had completely vanished into thin air. Li Jun firmly planted his hand on the ground, causing Hei Ji to flinch, then smirked triumphantly. Feels no different from a regular person, does it? Because you've lost all your power, he confidently informed her, utilizing the deep cutting method to sever their connection. This method, called the deep cutting, was an S-rank skill of cancer, designed to sever any desired connection. Though invisible to the naked eye, Li Jun had upgraded it to a whole new level. He proudly boasted about his ability to sever the link between the representative and the guardian deity, a trick that Han Jin, the collapsed cancer, would love to do the most. The deep cutting was an S-rank skill of cancer, designed to sever any desired connection, even if it was unseen by the naked eye. But Li Jun had taken it a step further, showcasing his newfound power by swinging his fingers towards the sky with an expanded smile, looking no different from a villain. He spoke plainly, I want to do this to wipe out all the guardian deities, you damn dog. But before he could finish his sentence, a violet lightning bolt struck right between the two. When had it turned into dark violet lightning striking down from the sky? Countless thunderous roars and swirling clouds formed large holes, creating a vortex that swept away everything in its path. The Song Tu guardian deity was infuriated, using her blinding light to flash and thunder, causing the earth and sky to tremble. The swirl of wind blinded everyone standing in front. Then from there spat out the form of the Song Tu goddess, Frigia, who was glaring at Legion. But already being a kind of perverted main male character, he stuffed his hands into his pants pockets and laughed haughtily. The sky hadn't even turned dark yet, but the lights were already blazing bright. Oh my, grandma! The swirling wind receded. 
only leaving a purple magic spell still lingering. In a short while, the mother figure Freja appeared, with a furious face and hair flying, no different from Medusa appearing. Not even a second had passed. She was already raging, summoning power, so great that the system had to issue an urgent warning, temporarily adopting a mocking expression for Lisa's brand. Who knew what that weirdo was doing? just liked throwing down fierce blows on the ground. Only later did he realize there was something fishy, looking like a flashlight at first glance, but turned out to be a fragment of the Cancer constellation, which he used to absorb the power of Freja, not to mention the mother. Just seeing that thing made her want to curse. Every zodiac sign always has ways to counter each other. It absorbed the power of Songtu into itself, turning it into a cool breeze, making him smile confidently again. Too bad he no longer had his beloved Jenny by his side, if he could still hold that sword in his hand. Then even if he was a divine being, he would cut down everything wherever he went. By the way, summoning the creative workshop as well, it had pieces like Cancer Constellation Fragments, Thunder and Wind of Somtu. He had them all in his hands already. Although he felt a little regretful about this limited fragment of Cancer Constellation, but he had to use it to create something better. Legion straightened his hand to grasp the fragment of the constellation, pulling out a brand new Yuan view blade, looking cool and tough like a beetle. But Aeon's workshop was just a thatched house, lacking crafting skills, so this was just a recycled 1x0 item. But that was enough. He smiled mischievously, activating Legion's fighting instinct, looking no different from the incarnation of a setting, thirsty for blood stomping heavily on the ground, slashing a decisive path from top to bottom, making the goddess Freja scream in a hoarse voice, holding her face in pain, carefully needing to stitch up about ten stitches, along with the humiliation and embarrassment, temporarily stopping to scream and unable to raise her hand anymore. The kids and Heiji widened their eyes. The zodiac goddess, who he could defeat as easily as chopping wood. Was she still a human being or not? Whether she was a human being or not was unclear. But in the eyes of Freja, Hugo was just a weak god. The angrier she got, the crazier she became, mockingly ridiculing. Both of them couldn't accomplish anything. But it was all part of Hugo's plan. Only the pure power of the Sagittarius constellation wouldn't accomplish anything, however, it wasn't just them who opposed. Other divine beings looked down, all expressing their dissatisfaction. When Freja intervened directly in the lives to strengthen her territory, they sent a warning. The forces of Somtu must retreat continuously. The mother was worried about being stoned. A summoning magic light appeared brightly in the bright sky from which a long chain shot down, aiming at the blank space where the bewildered daughter was wrapped tightly. This was a punishment measure, for the gods' violation of the laws through the chain, taking away most of the daughter's energy to make her behave, a warning blow like this and still continuing. Preya would face extreme hostility from other divine beings. The scene stirred the dusty atmosphere apart, the young grandchildren stood staring into the distance. The adults saw how wonderful the flash was, of course, except for Heiji's mother, who wasn't pleased with anything, seeing her daughter being treated like a pet. Not only that, the daughter just stood still, hearing Hugo's criticism and reminders to Freja, or the other divine beings. She couldn't just sit still. He was close, asking her if she dared to cause more trouble. To receive a bigger punishment. Freja gritted her teeth, looking at Hugo with a bitter gaze, then let out a roar that shattered the glass door, shaking the psyche of those present, viciously pointing her finger at Hugo's peach tree brothers. Listen, boys, today's events will never be forgotten. Just wait there, Legion doesn't need any more trouble. Cheerfully raising her middle finger, she added, and next time, remember to bring your big brother along hotter than eating chili. But Freja knew she couldn't do anything more. She transformed into scattered purple pieces, 
merging with the atmosphere, gradually disappearing from the sight of the crowd. Then it was time to receive the reward. The system notified that Legion had received his reward, trampling on the pride of the Song Tu deity, recognized by the observing entities in addition to this world. He also gained a large amount of zodiac experience. When he reached level 10, he would face a special trial. Reading the notification with joy, Legion turned to where his close friend Otaksu was saying goodbye to Apollo, and the kids looked like they had just returned from a difficult journey somewhere. He patted his friend's shoulder approvingly. It's all over now, but he's still pretty upset. Thinking about Frigia tormenting Sanja, it gnaws at him with bitter resentment. An arrow pierced through her head. Seeing his friend so angry, Legion assured him it would be over soon, just be patient, and they'll crush him eventually. Her son, Sanjay, wouldn't even have any bones left to pick up. That confident look warmed Hugo's heart, secretly thanking him, but suddenly remembering something. He reached into his body and took out what Legion needed from the Yin Yang Palace. As soon as he saw the scroll, he burst into laughter, needing evidence to record the soul contract linked with Somtu. Heiji, of course, received her belongings, she screamed. How could Hubo remove what was there? The strict security measures were theoretically at the highest level, but the skills of infiltration and concealment were basic skills of an archer like Hugo, not to mention the Somtu badge that Legion gave her. Legion ignored the two arguing idiots over there, turned his back and opened the scroll to see. In the list of linked souls, there were some powerful characters, like the insane Preset or the King of Stubbornness, Doton, even the King of Warriors Ra now. Legendary level strength was also present. Without saying anything, all three had surrendered to Fujiting, allowing Legion to accept them. As members of his tribe or his prisoners, having a commanding soul character being sealed at the bottom of a deep abyss the electric yin-yang sea area also showed signs of surrender. These sealed souls were highly likely to reach mythical level, so they were imprisoned like this, pocketing many obedient and useful beings. But Li Jun couldn't accept them right away, he asked back. If they wanted to join the Tou faction, they should prove their sincerity first. The fancy words on the scroll lit up, then frantically flew up into the sky above his head. They swirled like a blender, and from there appeared a girl. Her head turned upside down and fell to the ground. Just a glance made Legion shocked to the core, and everyone else too. The most surprised was Heiji's mother. Even with her nearsightedness, she could see clearly. It was her own body that had been offered up to Legion by the surrendered souls, which was hilarious beyond belief. Legion laughed out loud as if he were going crazy. He didn't expect them to be so cheerful, so he accepted. All the souls linked to Songtu, quickly subjugating them before Heiji. The system notified Legion to give them names, but his innate laziness kicked in, so he just called the whole bunch in order as one, two, three. Heiji's soul screamed from behind, just as she was about to curse Legion. He grabbed her by the neck, reminding her to remember. The Song Tu deity had given up and run away, so she was completely alone. If she knew better, she would answer. Whether she was the one who stabbed him in the back in the demon tower, Heijai choked up, showing no signs of confessing, just poking fun at Legion, extremely angry. He gently used magic, pressing lightly on her forehead with two fingers. That was enough to torture her to reveal everything. You'll see, I'm using the fragment of the Yuan Vu blade from earlier, touching your forehead. And if you still don't confess, then feel it, the feeling of your soul being torn to shreds. Heiji cried tears of pain, but Li Yang stopped his hand. The magic from him was so powerful that the kids didn't dare to come close, like shown down. Even Larry Queen and Hugo had to be cautious, keeping their distance unable to bear any more. Heiji raised her neck and cried out, because Virgo was being punished. In Legion's eyes widened, as soon as he received the answer. 
he cast a spell on her head, whether it was raw or cooked. Finally, Li Chen released her, but the pain prevented her from crowing. If only she had spoken earlier, she wouldn't have had to endure such extreme pain and to reward him for very useful information. He would return her body to her, thinking it was a good deal, like being reincarnated. But there was something fishy about it. Why could her body stand up on its own like that? Larry Queen, inside Hiji's body, was ecstatic and ecstatically screaming with joy. Although not chosen to be released, releasing Hiji's soul like this was also fine. She kept apologizing for accidentally handing her body over to Larry Queen. But Lee Jun was clearly laughing heartily. He comfortably accepted Larry Queen's tight embrace inside Heiji's body, enjoying the life of a villain. In front of the shocked owner's eyes, the next day at Sun Jae's house, Yang Wei and Larry Queen were arguing with each other about the places that needed fixing in the stack of soul contracts recently updated to Grade S exclusively created by the sacred Virgo. It seems that ever since Larry Queen was brought back in this form, she had become an indispensable helper to Legion. She was enthusiastic about her work, even asking him to provide a list of souls so she could make them all stronger, maybe even reaching grade SS. But on the contrary, in that exhibition box over there was a statue containing Heiji's soul, crying and begging to be released. But even if Li Jun were to release her now, it wouldn't make a difference because there was no body left for her to return to. Suddenly, there was a new notification. Li Jun could now learn a new skill, the contract of the serpent. While contemplating how to use it, the newly recruited spirits were noisy and flattering, like a bunch of clowns. Their souls were wandering around the house, and every time Li Jun looked over, they would shout, Oh my, he's looking at me. It was truly amusing. Li Jun turned to Taksu beside him, thinking that the deities must be very proud. But who would have thought they would end up like this? Taksu was pleased and suggested adding the ice deity to the mix, cursing and scolding like some street vendors. Hey, you! You're Li Jun's first slave, so how dare you call me Leo, who's a slave? Taksu turned to stone on the spot, and his mother waited for his friend to speak up and help. But unexpectedly, that scoundrel turned his hand towards Taksu and corrected. He's your first slave, not mine. How can he be a slave? From every ice deity, now all three of them were addressing him directly, and the slave O Taksu stood boldly before his master, having accidentally started a conversation. Legion asked why the three of them had turned their backs on their Song Tu faction to join his. They all bowed in unison, unable to bear the sight of Frigia's violent beauty. Her speech was as vile as ever, yet Legion actually believed her. After two seconds of discussing together, they unanimously stated the real reason was that they felt very relieved when they saw the Song Tu faction being swiftly defeated by Legion. Good land attracts good birds, and these three deities ch changed sides, not only because of the Divine Ones, but other deities and army commanders had also decided to surrender. It was just a pity that they were being held captive in the sacred land, so they were not present here. Currently, humanity had lost more than half of the earth to the gods, those not yet classified. Although at first glance, the Zodlak deities were still maintaining balance with them. In reality, they didn't even dare to reclaim the territories overrun by the deluge. Now gathering together, trying to resist the invaders, they seized the remaining territory of humanity. The sacred land imprisoned the other deities at the bottom of the Yin Yang Palace, which was near the Pacific Ocean and quite close to the flood zone. It wasn't clear who that person was, but they were so dangerous that he had to personally go check out the situation. The voices of the three deities interrupted his train of thought as they collectively kneeled, swearing to sacrifice their lives to Legion. Okay, this trio seems trustworthy. Legion smiled. Get ready, the brand of the three deities is about to embark. There's something they need to do. Witnessing the gods' sensitive reaction, even Sun Jae was amazed. Uncle, 
you're so cool when you're mad, he exclaimed. Just as Sun Jay finished speaking, Yu He suddenly smiled strangely, blurting out, congratulations on the happy family. It was a normal child's phrase, but it pierced into Taksu's ears, and the father and son trio, as well as the three deities, fell silent, bowing their heads. But Li Jun knew he had messed up, so he quickly reassured his friend, advising him to quickly lower his gaze. His friend's fiery gaze cut through him as he clenched his lips, trembling with fear before his friend's intense gaze. Did you really mean that? Li Jun's lips trembled as he tried to speak, fearing his friend's reaction. Yu He's innocent remark had made the situation tense, and the atmosphere was so intense that Sun Jia couldn't help but laugh out loud. You said it perfectly. Now you have to die here today. Taksu exploded, firing at everyone around him, regardless of who was hit. But their mouths kept apologizing. Sorry for ruining Father's Day. You'll have to die here today. Taksu used the art of invisibility to sneak up on his friend, intending to launch a fatal blow. Li Jun only realized he was serious, not joking. He chilled as his eyes widened with realization. Li Jun also had to employ his skills to sense the magic of the Sagittarius constellation. Hands moving left and right while his eyes remained shut, Li Jun could sense the arrows of his home piercing through his subconscious. He also saw successive flashes emitted by Otaksu, who jumped to dodge his friend, aiming to find weaknesses. He fired arrows at a barrage of rockets aimed at Li Jun, but he remained unfazed, using his hands to catch and shatter the arrows. Frustrated, Hotexu began cursing, truly annoyed by the arrows smudging his face. He couldn't believe how persistent they were. Unexpectedly, this insult provoked Li Jun, igniting a furious flame above his head. Texu resorted to the secret technique of the Zodiac, creating a large ring of fire with the chains of the solar deity, drawing in the wind to fan the flames. As he muttered to himself, Li Jun followed suit, silently asking O Taksu if he really wanted to play with chains indoors. Sun Jay had already borrowed all the savings, leaving them broke. Money was now as insignificant as a fly on the edge of a fly's wing. Taksu shouted with determination, despite his arrogant demeanor, making Li Jun understand. Sun Jay, the little kid, was just like him, not hesitating to burn down a house. The two kids stood below, whimpering, trying to stop their dad. Otexu mistakenly thought Yuha and the others were worried about him, only to hear them all shout in unison that dad couldn't beat Uncle Legion. The image of a strong father figure shattered in an instant. Otexu let himself go, even the fiery chains didn't bother to stay, taking advantage of his frozen friend like a wax figure. Legion struck a blow that knocked him out cold. Taksu woke up to a throbbing headache, not finding Legion to continue the reckoning. Then his voice startled him awake, realizing he had aged. Could he trust the words of those kids? Looking at himself, he resembled the guy who would marry his friend's daughter without hesitation, lacking the qualification of a family man. He lectured the two kids, who rarely showed emotion towards their father, assuming they cared a lot. They were even out buying gifts for him. Just as he finished speaking, the two brought coffee and oil cakes. Teksu's favorite, but that was enough. O Teksu was moved to tears like a child. Rushing to embrace his beloved children, he cried out to them. But the kid had already rushed over to brag to Legion. This kid was meticulous in everything, listening to Uncle Legion's advice. He even dared to send fight clips to journalists, as instructed by uncle. The moment of fatherly love quickly faded before it even began. Otexu collapsed, looking at his son, who was ecstatic about being idolized. He even gave his share of cake to Vijan. Suddenly, he looked up, noticing his cake was missing a piece. His friend asked why there was so much cream on the cake. Teksu knew immediately that his cake was missing, the delicious cream on top gone. Trying to salvage it, he pointed 
and asked where that piece of cake was. Unexpectedly, Yuha smiled like a morning sun, replying that she had given all of Dad's cake to Uncle Legion to eat. Otexu shouted in frustration, tears flowing, rushing to where Legion was, trying to grab his share back. But at that speed, how could he stop him? Otexu erupted into anger again, lamenting the lack of peace in that house. If things continued like this, the whole family would be out on the streets, with no money left to repair the house. Yang Wei got punched, his face burning, obediently sitting in the corner for Larry Queen to stitch him up. The old man only grumbled about that Hugo kid, unable to discipline his own child, afraid to teach him a lesson like before, fearing another punch might send him straight to hell. Sitting there watching his big-headed father, like a child sulking over each strawberry, his phone buzzed with an unexpected message. On the screen, Li Jun's old picture was the background, signaling the urgent summon from the Gemini Saint, as there were red ramped eagles causing chaos at the Thienly Bridge, near the Haiyan Beach, close to the capital Manila in the Philippines. Dark clouds were rolling in, accompanied by thunderbolts tearing through the sky, as if wanting to tear through the fabric of space. Below on the sandy temple, military units were arranged in rows facing straight towards the sea, awaiting orders. The Lion Constellation's leader tightened his grip, shouting loudly as the holy man was absent. They had to take matters into their own hands. The red-ranked eagles were approaching, presenting an opportunity for the Lion Constellation to once again stand at the top of the world. With the rallying cry of the leader, the entire constellation's morale soared, with only Yuha standing there tired, wanting to go home. Standing outside the headquarters of the Sagittarius Constellation Army was a crowd of people waiting for orders from an elderly man with silver hair and wrinkled skin, muttering curses under his breath. He fondly admired an unidentified object emitting a mysterious green hue, his lips curling into a smile as if he alone understood the significance. The gift must have reached the rightful owner by now, he muttered to himself, amidst the world's confrontation with the monstrous beast, Legion, clad in Taksu's apparable bear-themed apron, focused on crafting new weapons. Despite numerous failed attempts, the interior of his workshop remained conducive for Legion's use. However, the Sagittarius Science residence resembled an abandoned building under renovation, with the roof partially burnt and blown away. Taksu was diligently repairing it like a skilled craftsman, eagerly welcoming the arrival of the Sagittarius Saint's secretary, Ionirin. Carrying a suitcase and a box of papers, she hadn't seen him in a while. I have to ask about your house. It looks like this. Taksu didn't want to explain further, urging her to come in first. The TV screen was broadcasting news about the red-ranked eagles, and Taksu quickly explained that his daughter Yuha was on a mission there, so he had to keep track of it. Suddenly, noticing the box in Yurin's hand, Taksu wondered what was inside. Before he could ask, she placed it at the doorstep and rushed inside. From the box came a loud scratching sound, startling both of them. Inside the room, Legion accidentally broke something due to the low grade of the crafting tool, ruining the materials. Looking at the shattered sword on the crafting table, he cursed, knowing he needed higher-grade equipment to create items of the desired level. However, the highest grade he had was a makeshift hammer, and he regretted not having his premium hammer. He hadn't felt its touch for twenty years, considering it lost. Limited and Earth Picks also had higher grades, but they weren't enough for him to craft high-level sacred artifacts. Legion couldn't give up because he had to be prepared before facing the Virgo constellation. Suddenly, the window of the Sagittarius Saint's house signaled a message, indicating that the breath of another Sagittarius constellation was being concealed outside. Teksu quickly glanced outside and decided to go see what was happening. Inside the box was a communication device emitting a noisy and solemn voice, asking if this was the house of the Sagittarius Saint, Hugotas. I am Sir Jaivich, 
the voice continued. Tech Su didn't seem pleased to see the statue. As Li Jun walked out, he overheard his friend's remarks and casually slung the crafting hammer over his shoulder, trying to look tough. Who dares to hide in this sanctuary? Li Jun thought, but it turned out to be the esteemed Dia No. 35. Upon hearing the statue yell hello, Li Jun appeared surprised, but introduced himself as Serge Ivich Vladimirivan, the Sagittarius Saint. He joked about the long full name introductions and questioned if it was Sir Bashan who made the statue roar. As Li Jun was about to respond, the Fork's deer didn't say anything else except for nonsense banter. Additionally, there was no collaboration between him and the deer with elephant glue, as he never received any materials. The deer's first-hand information was cut off when the statue was shattered. However, Sergeyevich just sat in the room, laughing to himself as if in a tent without any light. Finally, he revealed himself and explained that he was here to apologize. However, before he could finish, Li Jun grabbed the statue's head and tossed it in the air, smashing it to pieces. As Sergeyevich tried to salvage himself, hoping for a joint effort, Li Jun enthusiastically smashed the statue into pieces, treating it like a toy. Hey, didn't you wait to hear what he had to say? Li Jun's friend looked more credible to convince his friend, but the fake deer couldn't say anything except gibberish. Besides chatting with Kui, he can't do anything, he added. Realizing that the communication with the fake deer was cut off, Sergeyevich sat alone in the room, laughing to himself. As the screen suddenly cut to static, Teksu quickly turned it off and Sergeyevich stepped outside, unveiling the scene of the thousand-foot calamity reappearing after twenty years, as Li Jun wondered about the absence of Gied's figure. Greetings, esteemed viewers. Currently, I am present in Manila, Philippines, where the Red Rant Calamity is about to attack, a calamity once eradicated by Hero Legion twenty years ago. On the coast of Manila, Philippines, a similar calamity will reappear, with many powerful saints gathered here to confront it. Prominent among them are the Sagittarius Constellation Deputy Chion Yuva and Chairman Oliver, aiming to enhance their strength. We must mention the magical users of Pisces who have assembled in full force. Next, the skilled defenders responsible for the front lines of the Taurus constellation stepped forward. Behind them were the saints from Aquarius, specializing in using the power of dissolution. Even the Sagittarius constellation, responsible for crafting and enhancing the necessary weapons for battle, joined the fight. It is worth emphasizing that the Sagittarius zodiac constellation directly commanded the cameraman to capture the scene, making Li Jun visibly annoyed. Suddenly, a demon with a seemingly authentic appearance appeared, prompting Li Jun to raise his hammer high in the air, emanating a green aura with the symbol of the Sagittarius constellation on its surface. However, unexpectedly, the reporter stated that it was the Sagittarius saint's sacred artifact, the Hammer of Reality. Teksu even asked if it was Li Jun's, leaving him puzzled. The two tiny individuals looked bewildered, continuing to observe the scene of the Sagittarius Saint, enhancing his combat power with his sacred hammer right before the battle began. Li Jun angrily retorted, venting his frustration, but the sound of the reporter successfully distracted him, as something was emerging from the depths of the sea, causing the sea level to rise slowly. The sky began to storm, with the water rushing down, leaving behind a monstrous octopus-like creature with numerous eyes and tentacles. Its colossal body could create powerful waves with each movement. The reporter exclaimed that it was the thousand-foot calamity, rejoicing as if it were New Year's Eve, much to the astonishment of those present. Under the gaze of the colossal octopus, countless beings were being ensnared, by something emerging from its tentacles, causing them to scream in horror. Stephen Maker, the Sagittarius Science disciple, was desperately trying to free his comrades from the grip of the calamity, using his colossal bone to fight it. However, his billion-dollar bone was lost due to this monster, much to his regret. 
Meanwhile, the disciples of the Lion Constellation were in a state of panic, not expecting their saint to lose control over a mere bone. Serdivich suddenly appeared behind Oliver, startling him and mocking his intentions. Oliver, however, regained his composure and quickly issued orders, not allowing the mad Guillade to steal the credit. Firstly, all the Lion Constellation disciples were instructed to drink stamina-enhancing potions provided by the Sagittarius Constellation. Next, the Gemini Constellation was ordered to use their magic on the sea to enable comfortable combat like on land. The Libra Constellation was tasked with enhancing their physical abilities and defensive capabilities while the Taurus constellation was assigned to establish defensive lines to cope with emergencies and deal with the calamities on the shore. Responsibilities were delegated to the army leaders and the Lion constellation's chief, Oliver, immediately leaped into action, leading his army into battle. The Lion constellation army, injected with stimulants, became wild and ferocious like lions in the deep forest. The liver roared to start the attack immediately, followed by hundreds of Lion Constellation soldiers rushing towards the monstrous calamity looming over the water's surface. Oliver ordered them to use the beast transformation skill, and a golden light enveloped them, transforming their skin into thick fur and their nails into sharp claws, resembling dark-colored beasts. At the forefront, Xion Yua shouted to signal the arrival of the second wave. All the disciples of Aquarius opened up, releasing their magical powers into the sky, forming a colossal mass of dark energy shaped like a lion with five four-winged stars on its forehead. A magnificent sight. The beastly entity launched forward like a real beast, charging towards the thousand-foot calamity, opening its wide mouth full of sharp teeth and biting it fiercely. Both seemed to be locked in a deadlock, unable to move, under the astonished gaze of the assembled saints.